This one is white-headed Munia. And this one is white-capped Munia. These two bird species have almost the same appearance. Doesn't infrequently, people also equate to the wrong identify them. The Hakim's aviary doesn't yet have a pale-headed and white-capped Munia. Here there is only white-headed Munia. And it is this bird species that we will discuss now. It's the aviary! White-headed Munia, Lanchura Maja. The white-headed Munia or Lanchura Maja is a tiny bird with a body length of only about 9 to 11 centimeters. If you want to compare, their body size is almost the same as the length of an adult's middle finger. Their entire body is covered with brown fur, except for the black center of the belly. As for their heads, faces, throats, and chests are pale white, and their beaks are silver. It's easy enough to tell them apart by white-capped Munia. Just pay attention to the throat and chest. The white-capped Munia has a black chin and throat, contrasting to the white-headed, an all-white top. However, it is difficult to identify male and female white-headed Munia. The two are almost identical. One of the differences between males and females lies in the white color of their heads. The female's white-headed head is paler than the male's. There is another way that is easier to do, namely through voice and singing. Only the male white-headed Munia sings, and they will sing if they meet a female bird in the mating season. Their voices were high-pitched and shrill, similar to the sound of a flute. Yes, their singing is not so melodious. The sound of the flute isn't always melodic, right? Especially if the flute player is not good at playing it. In Indonesia, these birds are widespread in Sumatra, Sulawesi, Java, and Bali. However, they are not native to Indonesia because they are in Thailand and the Malay Peninsula. They have also been introduced to Japan, to be precise, in Okinawa and Osaka. In addition, there is also a subspecies of these birds, namely Lanchura maja vietnamensis, which, as the name suggests, inhabits southern Vietnam. White-headed Munia is often seen in swamps, gardens, meadows, forest edges, and rice fields at an altitude of 1,500 meters above sea level. Doesn't infrequently, they also appear near human settlements, especially if the area still has a lot of trees. They like to climb into the trees to just perch and spend the night, then down into the grass or on the ground to find food. Like the finches discussed earlier, white-headed Munia likes to eat grass, seeds, and rice. They can open even the tough seed coat using their thick silver beak. These birds live in small or large groups to forage together. They are passive and calm birds who like to mingle with other sedentary birds, such as the chestnut munia and the scaly-breasted munia. And when the rice in the fields has aged, the white-headed munia and their hordes will come to attack in unison and destroy the rice ready to be harvested. Like ninjas, they come and go quickly. Their small body size allows them to move very agilely. To anticipate their invasion, farmers usually rely on pesticides or scarecrows. But it doesn't infrequently, they also use the help of owls. Although white-headed Munia likes to live in groups, they will disperse to various places and live in pairs before breeding. They can even match while still a teenager. The mating season for white-headed Munia usually begins after the rainy season, specifically in February. However, they can reproduce throughout the year if the weather is favorable and sufficient food supply. Pairs of white-headed Munia males and females will build their nests together. The nest is made of dry grass arranged like a ball, with a hole in the top or side of the nest. The nest is on a tall, shady tree, placed between leaves and twigs. Female birds will lay about four to seven eggs. Both the female and male parents incubate the white eggs alternately during the day, although only the female parent sets at night. The eggs will hatch after 12 to 14 days. Then the two parents will take turns looking after and feeding their young. 
They don't feed their young with grain, but small insects, such as grasshoppers and caterpillars. The reason, because insects contain higher levels of protein than grains. Three weeks after birth, white-headed munia chicks can fly. Then they will leave the nest and practice foraging on their own, although sometimes their mother will accompany them. In contrast to adult birds, juvenile white-headed munia are completely brown. After they molt at six to seven weeks, their heads will gradually grow white fur. At this moment, the juvenile white-headed munia can be said to have fully grown into an adult bird. The white-headed munia is a long-lived bird. The white-headed munia can live to reach the age of 18 minutes 20 years. Because of their social nature, white-headed munia is sometimes willing to feed the chicks of other species, especially if they live in aviary. White-headed munia is classified in the category of least concern on the IUCN red list. Their presence in the wild is still abundant, although these birds are hard to find in urban areas in Indonesia. The white-headed munia and other birds belonging to the grain-eating species are often considered agricultural pests. However, if we use another point of view, their presence can be an indicator of the quality of our environment. If many birds such as white-headed munia roam in the background, it indicates we have a healthy environment. On the other hand, if our environment is highly polluted, such as by pesticides, seed-eating birds will no longer visit our environment. 